All right, you just heard it. Stick that in your country song. We just talked to Davis, who was one of the co-writers on that. Now we're going to bring in the other man who's on that song, Jeffrey Steele. Dude, I appreciate you taking some time. You know, a little bit of insider information I heard from Davis. He said that you originally had like 12 verses for that song. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> once the line once the line got spoken in the room, I mean, the the ideas to write about were just falling out of the sky. So we were literally, you know, just cataloging everything, and and then and then the more that we'd sing into the track, we're, ah, that doesn't fit, that doesn't fit, that doesn't make sense, and then we'd weed it out, you know. But yeah, there was a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. I bet, like. What? He, he was telling me, like, you Bob Dylan that you went all night. Is that kind of normal? Like, once you get on a roll, like, you just, like, you can't turn it off? Well, here's the thing. My, my process is usually, like, you know, I'll write, like, I'll start, like, this time of day, you know, in the afternoon. And I'll, I'll I like to write a couple of things before I get to what I really want to write. Uh-huh. Because I feel like I have to get my brain into a place where it's not thinking so much. And I can just kind of get just dumb it down. I like to tell people it's like, I try to just get to a place where I can just not think so hard about trying to get the song and just let it come through. And so it just, we were luckily at the end of a day and he was, he was coming out of of a right that he'd been in for the whole day. And it was awful. And he just not, (laughs) he just didn't have a good time. He he said, he's like, I'm so sick of writing these songs. I'm like, you feel like I'm writing the same song every day. I I just want to write something with meaning and substance and, and I, I think he's the one that, you know, he just want to stick it in a country song. And, and I looked at him, I said, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. And, it was, and it was like, and it was like late. It was, the sun was already down and he was in his, you know, I have this big compound downtown in Nashville and he had one of the rooms in there that was his studio. And, and I'm like, what are you doing? You want to ride it? Let's ride it right now. <laughs> yeah. and, and so it was already sundown and we hadn't had dinner or anything. We just, we just jumped in and, and, and it just, and the crazy thing, the crazy thing, it was 2015. Yeah. Yeah. No, he mentioned that. It was a long time ago. And and yet it's still timely today, which is insane. Just like the kind of shelf life. A a quick little sidebar. Yeah. Um, Of course we played it for everybody in town and they, and they all kind of went, Oh, you know, they kind of went like this, you know, (laughs) I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything like that. It's crazy to say stuff like that, but my history in Nashville is that when I came to Nashville from Los Angeles, like in the early nineties, I I was kind of one of these guys that grew up on Merle Haggard and Led Zeppelin. So my music was, my music was a ball of that. And so when I was playing my songs back in the nineties, people were like, Oh no, this is never going (laughs) to get on the radio. And so when people started like, being afraid of it a little bit, I was like, I think we got something because I, I knew from my own history, you know, it was my own Exa- history. Uh, it's almost like you get that reaction, then you're like, all right, this is kind of the thing you're looking for. This is when you know you've actually struck gold. I kind of want to go to what you said earlier on kind of, you mentioned you, you kind of go into the writer's room having written some things just to get your mind going. I know you're going to go into the writer's room after we chat here. So, like, do you, are you planning to come in with already a couple of ideas? Like, what is, what's the next 30 minutes going to look like once you log well, off and, and head into the writer's room? My deal, and you know, I've, and as long as I've been a songwriter now, it seems like I've been a publisher developing young writers. Um, and I teach, you know, I teach a school, I, I do I, the yep. whole thing, you know, and as my, I'm a little bit dyslexic, you know what I mean? I, I, when I, when I put, when I buy something and it's got an instruction manual, I start from the back and put it together. <laughs> I'm that guy. Yep. And that's how I write songs. I write backwards. I write from the ending to the beginning. Hmm. Um, years ago, I wrote a song for Rascal Flatts called These Days. And I wrote, I wrote the whole lyric and I didn't have a title for it. I just, I, this lyric came out of me and I just, at the last minute made up, you know, that's what I'm doing these days. And I, and it was, it was the last thing I thought of. And I started to stumble onto how I do things. And, and it always seemed like I would do it backwards. So my deal is when I get into a room, I am, I'm just praying as we start talking and getting to know each other, especially if it's somebody new, that somebody's going to say something, it's going to fall out of the sky. I mean, I've always got notes. I've always got preparation. I, I write songs that are prepared and, you know, mechanically, I call them mechanically written. We, we do what we know, the skills and what we know as songwriters. Everybody knows how to write a song. It's a songwriter, right? 
but you're hoping for the moment that's just going to fall out of the sky. Yep. Yeah. And that's what those, and that's what all those manufactured songs were for. So when you get to the real thing, you know how to grab it and nail it to the wall. No questions asked. You're going to nail that song every time. Yeah. That's what I try to teach people. And that's kind of my method. I'm just praying that it's just going to fall. And it always does. I'll, I'll pick up a guitar. And when I hear somebody talking, I'll just start, I'll just start playing whatever comes into my head. And invariably somebody will say something. I'll go, let's write that. You know, it's, <laughs> yep. it's happened to me so many times, you know? And so I just, I trust my history now, you know, you know what I mean? Like I yeah. trust the process. Dude, yeah. exactly. A hundred percent. You got to trust. So like you kind of mentioned these days was one of those songs where it kind of fell out of the sky. What are some of the other, cause I mean, you got so many hit songs. Well, like what's it, another example of like one that's fallen out of the sky. I'll blast, I'll blast through a couple, but I yeah, was going to write it. with these. I was in a write with these two guys, two, two buddies of mine. Uh, we've been writing forever. And, and we're right. We, we we're eight hours into this crappy song. It's never going to get recorded. It's just <laughs> crap. And so I finally, I am looking at my watch and I finally looked at him. I said, don't you guys got anything going on in your life right now that we can write a song about? And one, one, one buddy goes, I got a brand new girlfriend. I go brand new girlfriend. That's a great idea for a song. And we wrote a song at Steve Holy years ago, had a number one song on An another one is uh, international harvester for Craig Morgan. Uh, my buddy came in wanting to write a song about a John Deere tractor. And, you know, I'm from, I'm from Hollywood. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like, everybody's got a song out right now about a John Deere tractor. Right. Isn't there some other farm implement we can write about? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, well, there's international harvester, but it doesn't really rhyme. I go, no, that's great. It's great. <laughs> and we had a number one song. So um, I, I, I can go on telling stories about, I had this title, uh, Every Day You Saved My Life. Uh, and I, it was, I, I just said, this is gonna be the greatest song ever. And, but I couldn't write it. It wasn't coming to me. And, and I, I, for six months, I, I, I was trying to make something happen and it wouldn't come to me. So I just gave up on it and I, I filed it away. And then one day I was out in Durango, Colorado at this festival playing a show. And this girl was in the backstage area playing this piano and she's playing this beautiful riff. Her name's Alyssa Moreno. She's playing this beautiful riff. And I said, what are you do? What are you playing? And she goes, oh, I'm just practicing my scales. I said, don't move. And the first thing that came to my head was every day you saved my life. And it was three wow. years after I got the idea and we wrote it and Rascal Flatts had a massive hit with it. And so, so you know what I mean? I, I, I'm, I trust, uh, it's, I, I try not to rush into anything. Just try to let it fall. And that's what music's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, and there's a language, there's a language when you're like, everybody's always trying to rhyme words and get them to rhyme. And so they get into rhyme zone and all this crazy stuff. <laughs> I'm like, you know, the back in the day, the Beatles used to, to used to make up words. If they right. had a melody, yeah, yeah. like the, the, yes, the, the old song yesterday was the, the, the working title was scrambled eggs, scrambled eggs. And, and you, you laugh, but you go, they had a melody thing. And, and so John Lennon's thing was like, if you just make up words, eventually the right words will come out and it's a hard thing to wrap your head around, but it, it, it I'm works. here to say it works. It absolutely. Works. Oh man. That's so, that, that, I just, I absolutely love the stories because I wish I could be a fly on the wall for like when these songs are written, uh, just because of how they do come about. I would be remiss before we talk about your experience uh, on the upcoming albums that are coming out with Eric Church. Uh, my family absolutely loves Knee Deep, which I know that you had some work on. So I would I would be remiss if I didn't ask, how did Knee Deep come about? Well, I get a, I get a, you know, this is crazy to think about being a, a world famous songwriter that nobody <laughs> knows, you know. That's what that's my joke, you know, like I'm world famous and nobody knows me. But um, I get a call one day from Zach Brown. You know, you see your phone, it says, maybe, you know, maybe it says, maybe yeah, yeah, Zach yeah. Brown. I'm like, maybe Zach Brown. It's like, it's like Wayne's world, you know, the old movie. Um, I'm like, okay, Zach Brown's calling me. And Zach wants to come over and write a song. He's playing a show at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville. And he's got like three hours before his, uh, you know, between sound check and the show. So I'm like, all right, come over. So it's a story I tell all the time too. And uh, uh, he comes over and, and we start jamming and we're jamming on some Stevie Ray Vaughan and, and, and he's such an amazing guitar player, yeah. an amazing guy. And I'm, we're, we're with, I'm with Wyatt Durrett, um, another great songwriter. He's in the room too. And we're just kind of sitting around and we're laughing and jamming and nothing's getting done. And um, we start telling jokes. 
you know, and I'm going, okay, well, it looks like this is going to be a wash because we're just jamming. We're, but at least I could tell everybody I jam with Zach Brown today. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if that's all it's going to be, that's all it's going to be. Hey, right? Yeah. And so about an hour and a half into the session, we're telling these jokes to each other and I run out of jokes. And the only joke I have left is this joke my dad used to tell when he would take all of us kids out to dinner uh, um, to this restaurant back when this when I was a little kid. And it's the stupidest joke ever, but it's the only one I had left, right? So, and, and my dad, you know, my dad passed away young. He never got to see me, you know, chase my dreams and stuff. But I always tell writers, you know, that life is a full circle thing and everything we do comes back around. I'm always, I'm always just harping this thing, you know, that's my preaching thing. And um, so, so there I was sitting with Zach and, and nothing's happening. And we're telling jokes and I've got one stupid joke left and it's really stupid. Like at the bottom uh, of the barrel, like bottom of the barrel <laughs> joke, <laughs> yep. but it's my dad's joke. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I'm like, Zach, how deep is a lake with frogs in it? He's like, what? I said, how deep is a lake with frogs in it? He goes, I don't know. I said, I said, knee deep. Oh you know, my God. Knee deep, knee deep, you know? And he looks at me, he didn't laugh. He just looks at me. He's like, oh God. And then his eyes got big and he goes, that's a great title for a song. Wow. Gonna put the world away for me. And How and about running. that? And then you're off and to one, the races. And then one quick anecdote. Sure. Another, and this is, a lot of people don't know this. They've heard me tell stories all about what hurts the most over the years. But the one thing people, uh, there's one part of the story I, I don't always tell a lot, but my original title was what means the most okay what means what means the most was being so close and having so much to say that was the original title for the rascal flat song and i was in we had finished writing the song and i was in the studio singing the demo and i messed up and i accidentally sang what hurts the most and my co-writer goes oh my god he, i said i know i know i messed it up he goes no 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 come in here come in here and listen to it oh and I went and listened to it. It's like, what hurts them? I'm like, oh my God. That's so it. Another thing I, I tell my songwriters, I'm like, man, it ain't over. It ain't over till it's <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> Ama so from yeah. what I've heard already, it's these great songs have been spearheaded by bad jokes and mistakes. That's just, that's fantastic. Because that's the songwriter's life. Yeah. I mean, we're, obser we're observers. We look at stuff going on around us. And we try to capture it. Yeah. And, and, we, and, and I think the whole idea of being a songwriter is trying to stay in the moment. Because life is the moment. You know, it's the moment you're in. It's not tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's not yesterday. So you have to kind of stay in the, the realness of whatever you're doing in that moment. And invariably, I have found that somebody will either say something or play something or, 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 or uh, uh, emote something. Yeah. That will be a song. It will be a song that will last forever. Uh, and I can, I could go, if we had time, I could go on all day about it. So, I mean, most of the stuff I've had hits on, I've had over, you know, 85, uh, 90 singles on the radio. And, and uh, every one of them is something that fell out of the sky. The rest of them were made up mechanically. Man, how about that? <laughs> and I've I got, written tens of thousands of songs. You know? Yes, exactly. Oh my god, I got I got two quick ones for you because I know we got to get you to that writer's room, man, you're to good, make the good, next "Fallen Out of the Sky" song. But uh, you kind of mentioned how how it, all of all of what you just said about songwriting. Um, I think even for the great songwriters, had to have been put to the test when you go to the mountains of North Carolina to record with Eric Church. You got to write and record the song in the same day. Like, how much of a challenge was that for you? Um, you have to have, uh, I'm not going to say cockiness, but you have to have a certain amount of confidence yeah. in your craft. And that's why we learn the craft, you know. That's why we learn how to manufacture a song so we can write a real one at some point, right? Like I was just saying before. But it's such a long story into that whole trip, but... but um. Stormy Warren, you know, Stormy Warren from the highway, he's one of my dearest friends. And I always, I always send him my new songs. So I sent him this one song I wrote and he called, he texted me back and he said, uh, Oh my God, that's the best song you ever wrote. I said, Oh, come on, man. <laughs> he goes, no, I'm it's the best song you ever wrote. You got to get that to Eric church. I go, Eric's not going to cut something he didn't write. I mean, there's, that's like pointless to do that. He goes, you need to get that to Eric church. I go, 
dude, he's never gonna he, he's never gonna cut it. So behind my back, <laughs> he's he sends it to him. And the same thing, I, I swear to God, the same thing. My phone, maybe Eric Church. I'm like, oh, I'm like <laughs> and I'm like looking at my phone going, no way, <laughs> no way. Uh hello, Eric. <laughs> he's like, and he's like, he didn't record that song, but that song was good enough for him to go, hey. You need to come up here to North Carolina, and and we're going into the last week of production on my record. We've been up here for a month. Um, blah 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 blah. There's a whole other story that ties into Casey Bethard. Um, you know, Casey lost his son that year. Yeah. Um, his youngest, his young son got it got murdered, and my youngest boy died about 15 years ago. And 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 it's I, I won't. I, it's a long story, but my boy died right near Casey's house. Got in an accident. Mm. And so all these years have gone by and I've always, I've, I've always uh, um, just, you know, it's always been in the back of my mind. So Casey's son got tragically murdered over the Christmas holiday. It was January before I went to, to Eric's place. Yep. And so I was just kind of saying a prayer going, man, somehow hook me up with Casey. I just want to hug him. I just want to, you know, we were friends. We weren't real close, but we were pretty good friends. We've written a few times, but we've known each other for years and years and years. But it was just so the, the weirdness of like my son passing away near his house and then his son passing away like 15 years later. So I had no idea he was going up to Eric's. Ah. It was Super Bowl. It was Super Bowl Sunday. And Casey's, you know, oldest son is the quarterback for the 49ers. Yeah. yeah so, wow. so Casey, Casey was at the Super Bowl. So, so spin this in your head. So I, I'm, I'm just thinking good thoughts and praying. Like, I just want to get with Casey sometime. And I get on the bus to go to Eric's and Casey's sitting there on the bus. Hmm. It was the craziest thing. And, and, you know, he'd come there from the, the super, super bowl was over. He flew back to Nashville and he was on the freaking bus. There you go. And, and so we rode up together and we're hugging and we're commiserating and smiling and laughing and telling stories and reconnecting. And then we get up there with Eric and I meet Eric. I hadn't seen Eric in eight, nine years. You know, I've known him, but I just, you know, he's been just killing it and he's just been out doing his thing. I've been doing my thing. Yeah. So, and I never got, you know, Eric, I, I wrote the song, raise him up for, uh, mm -hmm. for Keith Urban and, and Eric. And, and I never got to really properly thank Eric for his amazing vocal on it. So we're all just kind of, you know, like group hugging. You know? and, <laughs> like, and yeah, so, yeah. So it made the process, I just got to tell you, it was a really emotional, uh, it's hard to explain. It, it was a, this real connection thing that happened and I, and, and call it whatever you want, but I just truly believe it was meant to be. That whole thing came down and it was meant to be that I got up, got a chance to go up there and, it made that, it, and, and the long answer to your question is, it made the process um, absolutely um, like walking through the park. I mean, yeah. Eric was so gracious, uh, so inviting, uh, such a great host, and and um, and you know, on the last day, Casey, I played "Stick That in Your Country" song for Casey. He goes, "Dude, you got you got to give this to Eric," <laughs> and we were going home, and I go, "He's not gonna cut it." It's a cool song though, right? He goes, he goes, he will definitely cut this. I go, Eric's not gonna cut a song in here, right? So Casey sent Eric the song. And there and you Eric go. Called, and boom. Eric called me the Eric called me the next day and said, dude, I'm cutting this song. Uh, um, <laughs> so amazing. Man, the power the, proce the process of being up there and, and writing, like uh, you know, doing life, and we wrote a couple other ones. Uh, and then him letting me play on it and sing on it. It was I gotta tell you, man. He's for, he's a first class guy. He is a first class operator. I, I've been around everybody, from the nobodies to the biggest in the in the business, in rock and roll, in pop, and in country. I write with everybody. I'm with everybody. He is one of the uh, one of the um, most straight up great guys I've ever met in this business. So, Man, absolutely. And, and you mentioned "Stick That in Your Country" song. Doing life with me is just such a it's such a beautifully written song. It's it's honestly like I can't pick a favorite, but it's it, it's one of my favorites. And then I haven't heard it yet, but from what you've kind of described, the emotion of you and Casey and Eric all together is that kind of where "Love Shine Down" comes comes about. Yeah, uh, uh, just kind of just kind of the same process of. Uh, um, it's the it's funniest thing. Like, like it's, well, starting with doing life, 
we're just sitting around and, you know, Eric's got this crazy, amazing catered in lunch. And I mean, we're just completely taken care of. He's got us <laughs> completely taken care of, you know, fattening us up and stuff. And, and, um, I just pulled out my guitar and started playing that riff. Oh, yes. Yes. I started playing that riff. And if you, if you know my history, I wrote a song, I wrote a song years ago for Montgomery Gentry called my town. And yep. it's a little bit off that riff. It's a little it bit of a riff off that riff. And I, I just was kind of grooving on it, kind of tuning my guitar. And Casey goes, dude, I love that. Keep playing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody started, you know, I always call it throwing darts. We just started throwing darts, you know, throwing out liners and one-liners at each other and and, um, and talking about our lives. And, and, um, and, and I got that. I think that song fell out in like 35 minutes. It was pretty wow. much done. <laughs> Wow. I mean, we wrote it that day and cut it that night. And and the other one, the other one, same thing. It just kind of, every time Eric showed up, like me and Casey would be in the room just kind of noodling around and Eric would show up and, and it was, it was never a thing. You know, Eric doesn't show up. There's not like this pretentiousness when he comes in the room. He's just a guy coming in the room, but he's coming, he's coming to get something done. It, yeah. It's going to get done and it's going to get finished and it's going to be good. Um, which I, you know, you know, artists take note, you know, <laughs> be prepared. I mean, if you want to be on where his level is now, I always tell these younger artists, man, you got to be prepared when you come into a room. Yeah. Um, um, uh, like I said, I may not want to write a song that comes off of your iPhone. That's a, that's a line you had, but you need to have those, those things in your toolbox. You need to have all those preparation things ready to go so we can figure out what that day is going to be like. But Eric's one of those guys who walks in and, 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 you know, some guys walk in and, and there's a thing, there's a separation and you can't, you can't get into their heads and you, I got to be able to get into your head to figure out what we're writing about. I got to know what you want to, what's, you know what I mean? What's, yeah. Yeah. If I can't get in there, we're not writing a good song. And, and Eric, Eric, just like, Grap, just, <laughs> it's like, come on, let's, <laughs> let's go, man. Let's rip it off and go and get it. And, um, I just so appreciated that whole turn too. It was, it was just beautiful. Well, Jeffrey, man, I, I, yeah, absolutely, and 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 I really do appreciate you taking some time uh, to to talk about all this. And uh, well, without further ado, let's take a listen to some of the songs from that project. Mm -hmm. 